when you're dealing with kind of like showrunners and writers who have had success in the way that these guys did with Game of Thrones, when you get that call about a kind of forthcoming project, does it just make it that decision uh, to get on board that project just that little bit easier when you know the kind of success that has preceded, uh, preceded this show? I think it's daunting because there's both, um, you know, yes, of course. And I think that what precedes them more than anything as a creative standpoint for both of us and I think for all of us is uh, they're just incredibly talented like mm -hmm. what a way to like flip it on its head and always reverse what you, the audience is an expect is expecting and sort of changing it and so as an artist you're like the endless possibilities that I can approach with one role and that amount of hours is incredible but also yeah like the bar is so high they're coming from two of the most successful you know true blood and Game of Thrones were two of the most successful shows in the last 10 years so you're just like okay like you know, when it's like less successful, like there's room, but here's like you're at the rooftop. So mm -hmm. I think it's ultimately, you, I think at the end, we just focus on the material, on the job, on the role, and that's all that is in our control. Yeah, and they gave us space to be collaborative and, and it just it really allowed us to, to feel free to explore different, uh, different aspects of our characters and stuff. So I think it was refreshing because as, as Asa mentioned, having that much success on their end, uh, they don't have to be as collaborative totally. if they don't want to be. So if they're deciding that they want to hear uh, what you want to bring to the character, uh, yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's, very uh, cool. Lucky if you can get it. And when delving into your characters, there's a lot to kind of to take in. I mean, you play incredibly intelligent people with brains a lot bigger than my own. I just want, in terms of your like research, do you seek to try and understand their skill set? Do you did you try and read books of physics and other theoretical things just to try and understand their world, or do, is it actually okay for actors to go? I don't understand any of that. As long as they do, that's what it matters. I feel like we watched like you know maybe watched a TED talk here or there or read some article, but I think well I can only speak for myself. I didn't retain any of it yeah. because that's just mm -hmm. you know I, I consider myself a relatively smart person, but not you know physics brilliant uh yeah. and i think it's our job as an actor to uh to uh to understand it just enough yeah. so that we can say our lines wonderfully i think there's no <laughs> the beauty of the craft that we do is there's no rule of thumb everyone has their own personal mm -hmm. approach and that's sort of that's what i love when you have a cast that is so large because everyone has their own take and that brings something different for me personally i had to because english obviously is my second language so what my the way that my brain processes things is i need to become familiarized with what i'm talking about therefore instead you know american sentences ways of phrasing are not natural to me so if i don't familiarize myself with it then i'm in a trouble spot but i'm i did i did and i mean i still don't understand it that I can tell you, I'm still, there's, I mean, there's nothing more complex than physics and science, <laughs> but it is really fascinating. And I think that part of the cool thing about our jobs is that we're, we learn a little bit of everything with the jobs that we get and it, it's exciting. And we did get someone to coach us through and walk us and educate us on what we were talking about. And then if you're curious, you know, others maybe went into the deeper, deeper dives. So it's fun, it's, it's a great opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask too. I mean, did you guys get to go to see Oxford University and walk around and kind of do a day, a day there? And how was that experience? Because it's kind of nuts, isn't it? Well, our scene is in Oxford. Yeah. We're in Oxford when we're looking at the sky and uh, we're looking at the countdown. It's we're Oxford. actually at the university. Yeah, you can tell them about that night. It was not. Yeah, it was well. freezing. It was freezing when we. <laughs> it's like the coldest <laughs> night of all, of our lives. Uh, yeah, that I can remember for sure. But yeah. uh, but you know, it's a uh, just to be on the grounds where yeah, our where our. Where we would have spent most of our yeah our, our academic careers, um, yeah, it was it, it was great to be able to have access to the university and of course its history, the, the buildings are wonderfully built and all that. So it was cool to be and there. And shutting down like the fact that we can shut down locations like yeah. that, like that or Piccadilly Circus when we were able to shoot in Piccadilly Circus and close it down with yeah. extras, like those are like one one time you know one of a lifetime moment. Mm -hmm. So it was you know just again the beauty of what we get to do. Sorry about the coldness. That's just England for you. There's nothing we can do about that. Oh yeah, it's winter too. It was like mm. it was right before the holidays. It was it was yeah. like negative ten or negative fifteen. We're freezing right. to death. And that fun that scene was funny because they probably had to CGI all the like out of our mouths because it was so <laughs> brutal. And I was like, just look at the because it's because it's so stop shivering. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys!
Yes. Hey, hey you guys. Hey you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys.